Hey folks, it's Jared Mananin from the website tahotrailguide.com. Today I'm hiking up to Winnemucca Lake. I'm doing a bit of an alternate route rather than starting at Carson Pass, which is kind of the traditional route and where you've probably seen me ski from quite a bit in the winter. I started down at Woods Lake, uh, the campground and day use area. I just parked down there. So I'm hiking a big loop. I don't know, I think it's actually not that big maybe I don't know, seven to eight mile loop but it's going to take me forever because i'm in pursuit of more sierra nevada wildflowers for the 2022 tahoe wildflower big year of which i'm competing i mean it's a fun competition but like last year with the birds this year it's all plant life in and around the lake tahoe area and that project is being hosted on iNaturalist, which is a website for uploading naturalist-oriented observations. So basically you post photos and people confirm what species uh, it is. If you don't know, or if you do know, people will confirm that, yes, in fact, it is what you say it is. And anyway, I'm up to a little over 360 species this year. My target goal is to break 500. The first time around that I did this uh, wildflower big year was in 2019 and I had only maxed out at about 350 to 360 species so I'm already well ahead of last time around. But that's also because I knew far less than I do now about wildflowers. It's been just kind of a on-the-job training almost thing except it's not a job it's more of a fun hobby that contributes to citizen science via iNaturalist. So, um, yeah, it just takes me forever to get anywhere when I'm out here getting wildflower pictures because I take a lot of pictures. And then I gotta edit those when I get home, upload them, and it's a whole production, but it's a fun production. I encourage you to try something similar if you ever have the opportunity to do a big year whether that's for birds or wildflowers and plant life i highly recommend it just really get immersed in that experience of learning all about the natural world preferably closer to home just so that you can become a little bit more connected to your home and where you live you'd be surprised i mean longtime locals of tahoe for example how many people and i and i'm one of them that just really don't understand or know or are aware of how many different and diverse species we have around here every little microclimate yields a different type of plant life and that's very exciting and then directly related to that plant life is the you know birds and other critters that inhabit those little microclimates so it's a pretty cool thing but yeah, <laughs> this is made for a pretty busy summer, I'm not going to lie. Uh, just because I care and I want to see how many I can get, it does take me a couple hours every day, including hiking and then photo processing and uploading. So in addition to my full-time summer job, this is pretty much taken up most of my time, hence my lack of summer projects. But... You know, it's a worthwhile project and it's something that I'm passionate about and enjoy. And again, it gives me another angle, another perspective of being outside. Rather than just grinding out miles like I used to, I log more identifications and observations. And, you know, neither way is right or wrong, it's just different. It's a different approach to being outside. A couple of notes about today probably notice through some of these landscape shots that skies are pretty hazy. Essentially we're in wildfire mode here on the west coast in the Sierra Nevada. The smoke that's in the air currently is drifted up from Yosemite, the wildfire down there. So we have hazy smoky days, which is pretty much a drag on things, but um, you know, unless that air quality index is super high, I'm still trying to get out as much as I can. 
probably also note that I'm all bundled up. I got a, a buff that I put on frequently. I haven't been wearing them, but I also carry some really thin gloves um, and pants. And a lot of that is a direct result of just the places I go, which happen to have water, therefore has mosquitoes. Uh, also, my ear tips, because I don't wear a full brimmed hat usually, end up just getting cooked if I don't cover them up. And I don't, I've said it before, I don't really prefer to wear sunscreen. I like to just have layers of fabric on top. So yeah, I bundle up. <laughs> it's not super fun. And if I'm only out for a short time, I'll wear shorts and a t-shirt, but man, trying to, you know, squat down or be on your hands and knees, getting a shot of a little tiny flower uh, and just getting devoured by mosquitoes in the process makes for not so good pictures in that same vein you are on your hands and knees quite often so having pants to at least cushion your knees just in the slightest is helpful but again i kind of take things to the extreme <laughs> so i get all up in there with the uh wildflower photos and these little water features here. Well, it's always worth taking a closer look because there are a lot of flowers that like to grow near them. Okay, folks, I'm gonna go silent for a while here. I gotta focus on these wildflowers, but I did make it up to Winnemucca Lake and it is absolutely beautiful. So thanks for coming along on this little ride. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out tahotrailguide.com for more information. And if you have any feedback or questions, post it in the comment section below. Also want to let you know that I do have a Patreon account as well as a PayPal and Venmo option. If you guys feel compelled to contribute to the health and longevity of this YouTube channel and Tahoe Trail Guide, check that out. So thanks so much for coming along and we'll see you next time.